Welcome back to the 6.5 Summit 2024. We are talking cloud infrastructure. And as you probably know, the theme of this year's summit is all about AI and how enterprises and consumers are taking advantage of that. And of course, we're still building out the infrastructure uh, as we uh, as we move along here. And it is my distinct pleasure to introduce Robert Hormuth from AMD. Robert, man, it's great to see you. What have we known each other for like 15 years or something? At least 15, if not more, Patrick. Yeah, it's great to see you and uh, great to be on the show. Yeah, it, it, it's been uh, it's been great. And Robert, like this whole data center AI thing has been absolutely amazing. But but what's as important as the technology is kind of dialing out on the strategy side, right? Uh, what um, enterprises are doing and and why they're doing it. And so a pretty broad quest question to start here. Uh, we believe that AI is is really a journey, not a, a destination. It's not like, okay, we're here. Um, and I'm just curious, because you talk to a lot of enterprises, where do you see them uh, positioned along this AI timeline? Yeah, no, it's a great question because I, I you know, you're absolutely right. AI is a journey. And if we kind of look back at all the historic technology waves from the mainframe to, you know, the PC, all these waves have come and they've all been bigger than the last. And, you know, there's a, there's a strong belief that this is going to be the biggest one yet ever, yeah. which has always been the case. But I do think we're like super early on the journey because I look at it and go, well, kind of what are we using AI for today? Um, and if you look at it today, um, it's mostly human influence. It's, Buy, click, watch, add, sell, um, very human influence based. We're moving into kind of the human Q and A, you know, we're starting to move into with office, you know, with co-pilot, we're starting to move into human productivity and with, you know, with some of the video and things like that are being out, we're actually getting into reasonable content creation other than a PowerPoint summary. Right. Um, but where we're moving to is what I like to think of is that the far end of human influence is true human assistance. You know, if you're old enough like me and I grew up watching the Jetsons and Rosie the Robot, you know, that's where we're going. Which, by the I mean, way, I did. I am Gen X, Robert. So <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, I'm there with you. Yeah. So I think that, you know, that true human assistance is going to just be huge. And, and it's hard to say who's going to be the winners, who are going to be the losers. But I don't think it's, it's going to be a very big field. And I think that the enterprises are just, you know, they're looking at today, where can they get the best return to impact their business, whether it be, you know, fraud detection and banking or, you know, new user experiences for helping consumers on their platform, you know, with, with enhanced chatbots and things. So, but I think we're really early on that journey towards that in state of really truly helping humans live better healthier you know longer lives and doing useful stuff for us so i'm yeah excited. robert uh i remember you know i started my career when uh there were still mini computers but you know we were moving to unix servers not linux servers but unix servers and and, and PCs and it, it feels, it's interesting, this definitely feels like something is bigger than I, I dare I say, even, even the internet, I'm getting that, yeah. that feeling right now. And that build out um, feels like there's even more reality on the benefit behind it. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, so AI definitely continues to evolve in advance. And I was at a, a bunch of conferences this week and uh, there were some people that are using this whole notion of AI time, right? Like AI time, uh, like pre-AI time, it was a year, right? And in AI time, it's like a quarter or three months or, or, or a month, right? Mm -hmm. And it's got to be hard for, for enterprise IT to know, like, how do I, how do I get best positioned? to be able to implement uh, AI. What kind of recommendations do, do you have for them? Yeah, so for, for enterprises, 
you know, what we've been talking a lot about is for them to get ready, there's there's kind of, you know, four or five things, six things they need to really think about in terms of doing and or partnering. And one of the biggest ones right now, um, you know, is if, if you kind of look at the power infrastructure landscape of data centers today, um, we're at a historic low vacancy rate. It's like 1.7% vacancy rate on data centers. Right. So, there is no space at the end. Um, and if you look at the data centers in construction, 80, something like 84, 85% of the new construction that hasn't finished is already leased. So, you know, we have this power capacity space problem brewing um, that enterprises have to really figure out. And so one of the biggest things that, you know, they can do to make space and create capacity for AI is deeper consolidation. So drive, you know, performance and efficiency with like Epic, you know, you can get five to one or eight to one consolidation of those five-year-old servers. Um, I kind of did the math and it's, it's estimated there's about a hundred million five-year-old servers out there. And, you know, that is about 43-ish so gigawatts of power. And if we consolidated all that down to Epic, you know, that cuts it from that 100 million to about 21 million servers at about, uh, you know, 14 gigawatts. So there's 30 gigawatts right there that we can go create space, power to go do AI. So I think that's step one. Um, you know, the, the second step, well, and, and kind of goes hand in hand, you know, efficiency and performance. You, you can't have efficiency and, and sacrifice performance. So you've got to do those two together. You know, and for us, part of that journey too with enterprise is, trying to make it really easy. Right. Trying to make, you know, easy consolidation or easy AI adoption. And so we're addressing that both on the Epic side and the Instinct side. You know, we put out a tool with VMware to help ease the migration across clusters called VAMP, VMware Architecture Migration Tool. So we help automate that consolidation. Um, and then, you know, on the Instinct side, we're trying to make it really easy to just work out of the box at the AI framework level. So if you're operating at, you know, at the, the framework level, we just work right. right out of the box. And so, you know, so we're trying to make it easy. And then the uh, kind of the the last part of this that, you know, we talk about is, you know, picking a partner that's really driving the innovation curve with packaging, um, advanced packaging, advanced semiconductor, and that can execute. Um, right. And, uh, you know, execution has been a hallmark for AMD the last, you know, five. I mean, we've executed four generations of Epic on time. The fifth is about out of the house. The next one is is coming soon. And so I was I was joking at the uh, adult tech world. You know, we have a word for that in Texas. Uh, you know, a uh, strategy without execution is all hat, no cattle. <laughs> so we, we have hat and cattle in AMD. We're at, we have a strategy and we're executing to it. So. No, I like that. So, you know, you brought up a really unique point that I don't hear a lot, which was that, hey, we're out of room and out of power. Consolidate maybe your non-AI AI servers to make room for uh, the AI AI part of it. I just, I, it's, I'm surprised we don't we don't hear that a, a, a lot more. And and Robert. You know, just to put an exclamation point on the power, I mean, in Reston, Virginia, uh, there literally is no more power on the grid, okay? Uh, there's no more power for more EVs, uh, more homes, uh, more yep. data centers. They are tapped out. And it takes, what, five years, best case, to get a new power station uh, uh, up and running. So I really appreciated framing that. And it sounds like uh, when it comes to... Uh, uh, instinct, right? Your play is uh, the easy button, or, or is that epic? No, well, it's actually we're trying to make it easy for us in AMD. We view it as we want to make it easy for customers to adopt AMD technology. With right. Epic, it's you know in the Epic world, how do we make consolidation easy and be easy in the x86 ecosystem of software and all that? So that that's great for x86, but we still have to make the consolidation easy. Um, to go drive that goodness. And then on the instinct side, it's about, you know, being a, supporting the open source, um, supporting the the frameworks out of the box. It's about, 
having the same libraries at the bottom. Um, you know, it's about having the, the rock them. You know, if, if people are operating at the Triton level, um, you know, we have a rock them Triton back end. And so that, again, we're, we're just right out of the box. And so we have to, we have to be easy on both, both sides um, to do that. Now that's great. So let's talk about differentiation, Robert. Maybe we we take uh, the next few minutes talk talk through that. How is AMD distinctive as it relates to AI infrastructure? You know, so I, I think if you if you kind of look at the journey that we were on with Epic, we tackled some of the biggest challenges in terms of you know driving core count up. And driving massive um, differentiation in core count, I/O count, and memory bandwidth, and that's been a really good recipe for Epic to to drive a, a clear performance and per, per watt leadership perspective. And if you think about where we're where we're going with Instinct, we get the advantages of all those years of advanced packaging that we've been doing, and now we get to do it over on Epic, on on Instinct. Sorry. And then if you look at like the, the 300X, you know, what's the big value, the differentiator in 300X? We've got two and a half times more memory capacity, onboard memory. And we've got 1.6X the HDM bandwidth compared to the, the volume competitor right now. And so what that translates to from a TCO, it's really simple. You know, if you needed eight of theirs to fit a model, you can do right. it in three and a half of hours. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's pretty easy math to go see the the memory advantage so we're going to keep pushing that memory advantage that memory bandwidth and i'd say the other thing that is part of our strategy on instinct that is uh you know we started a, a while back which was addressed in the open amd is always about open industry open source open standards so we started the alter ethernet um you know associate our consortia with a bunch of our friends to really go drive ethernet at scale have an open choice ecosystem of nicks and switches and that journey is going great patrick i mean the the, the amount of participation in the industry yeah. and the leaders in there um everybody's in uh, if you you remember jimmy pike and uh, you know oh, this is jimmy, oh yeah one of, one of jimmy isms you know never bet against ethernet right you're not betting against ethernet at all for scale out yeah and i'd say i um I don't bet against Ethernet either. Um, there are some technologies and high performance computing that make sense to, to to connect, but it's it's amazing every time you count Ethernet out, Ethernet finds a way of you know lowering latency, uh, increasing performance, uh, reducing power uh, in, in many different ways because it's it's almost an I don't want to call it an open source. Uh, uh, technology but the community comes together to make that happen and whether right. it's the hyperscalers or the uh big enterprise data centers ethernet makes a lot of sense yeah and then on the the other part of the open you know so you know ultra ethernet great for the scale out networking um if we wind the clock back to december of last year when we announced the 300x um, we stood up on stage and said we would open up part of Infinity Fabric for collaborators and strategic innovators. Yes. And, and you know, I'll, I'll, there'll be more of that to come soon. Um, but I'm happy to say, you know, we're, we're, we are fulfilling that promise to go address, um, to go do that, to help on that scale up um, to create bigger pods of GPUs, you know, within a pod. And so... You know, we're going to go address it with ecosystem partners and go move advance that in the industry. Oh, it's great stuff. And and by the way, so some people might say, well, hey, you know, Robert, what gives you the permission to do this? And it's like, by the way, congratulations. Uh, you now have eclipsed with Epic the market share uh, that when, when I was at AMD with uh, with Opteron, uh, I think it was. 32 percent so uh, <laughs> congratulations uh, on that and quite frankly your mi uh product line is on an absolute uh, uh rocket ship and it was really interesting at a conference that uh 
I was uh, covering, uh, Satya said that uh, the MI300X was the uh, best uh, price performance uh, GPU instance that, that they offer. And that's quite a, first of all, quite a testimonial. It's not theory, it's, it's an action. Uh, but also when I look at the starting point of, you know, how long that product line has been out, <laughs> that's like a rocket ship, man. Uh, it's been, it's been, a, it's been fun to watch. Yeah. And, then, and I think a lot of that goes to the testament of, you know, what Lisa and Mark and Forrest put in place in terms of the architectural choices, the advanced packaging, the being on the forefront of chiplets. Yeah. It was a, a lot more late binding decisions and optionality as, as we go. And, you know, getting back to, you know, well, what gives us the right? Yeah. Why back at, you know, look at Frontier. I mean, Frontier right. is the number one supercomputer for what, three years now? Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, the, there's a, there's another one on the top five list now, but it's, uh, you know, if you've looked at it's a uh, purse per watt, it's not very attractive. Um, and, you know, we, there was a, you know, in this year's at the ISC, you know, there was an, a small run of the 300A, which right. will be the next number one. Um, you know, that's the basic com combining the Epic cores and the Instinct cores all on package um, and a true APU and a true unified shared memory. And I am really looking forward to seeing how El Capitan. So we have a fair amount of experience building in really big machines yeah. solving really complex problems for some very demanding customers. <laughs> right. And, uh, right. Both, you know, for the U S government. So, um, so we do have, I think we've earned a right, um, to play in this field, given our, what we've been investing in and, and tackling some of the largest problems in the world with like uh, frontier to me, every time I see the stats on frontier, I'm just amazed at the the power the density the cabling the miles of this and that it's just like holy cow we built that or we helped know. Build that HD. Yeah. um yeah well robert uh you and your team you know a lot of people uh just cranking out at at, at amd it, it looks like a a fun 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 thing to be doing and sh and changing the industry and hey robert i really want to thank you for coming on the show and helping us kick off uh this uh, cloud infrastructure uh, section here. I really appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, complete. Uh, it was a pleasure, Patrick. Always a pleasure to talk. Sounds good. This is Pat Moorhead uh, and Robert from AMD signing off here. AI infrastructure, man. It is cool. Everybody's talking about it. It is a core piece of building out all of these amazing user experiences that wind up uh, powering and improving enterprises, and as Robert said, improving people's life on the consumer side. Take care and check out all of the cloud infrastructure highlights uh, from this track. Take care.